Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard New York Jets News, hosted by Jude Jets, the best darn place for some Jets news. Enjoy your flight. What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the New York Jets versus the San Francisco 49ers Week 2 Game Recap. I'm your host, Drew Jets, and before we get started, 83% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed, so make sure to hit the subscribe button, and without further ado, let's get started. We knew this was going to be a very long game, because on the first play, Raheem Mostert scored an 80-yard touchdown. Classic Jets for you. Um, some stats about the game, so the 49ers had 359 total yards, while the Jets had 277. The 49ers had one turnover, while the Jets had zero. 49ers had the ball 32 minutes and 13 seconds, while the Jets had the ball for 27 minutes and 47 seconds. And they were both tied for equally first downs. 49ers having 17 first, first downs, and the Jets having, well, 17 as well. Um, so, as you can see, the stats are kind of similar. On paper, you would look at this and probably you would say the Jets would have won without seeing the score. We held the ball for a long time. We had a decent amount of yards and we had a decent amount of first downs. But yet, we still lose this game by double digits. It's just crazy about how bad this Jets team is. Sure, you can blame it on Adam Gase, or sure you can, bl well, he's probably really the main reason, because Sam Darnold looked great today, um, but maybe the Jets and Sam Darnold could have did something on offense, so that he had weapons. Le'Veon Bell's on AR, Denzel Mims is on AR, they had four healthy receivers coming into this game, four healthy receivers. I mean, he doesn't have any weapons on the outside. And Perryman left the game in like the second, third quarter. So, I mean, it's like he was left with three receivers for majority of the game. It's just so sad about what's happening to Darnold in the situation. Um, but he did look better, which is something good. Um, so, I don't think Trevor Lawrence is going to be the Jets quarterback next year. I think it's going to be Sam Darnold. Um, a little recap of the scoring. So, Mostert, as I said earlier, scores the first touchdown on the first play. Um, the Jets' first points come with 3 minutes and 39 seconds left. Ficken kicks a 41-yard field goal. Um, 49ers. So, Jordan Reed has an 18-yard pass catch reception touchdown man I can't speak and he has another one with 11 seconds left it's this time being four yards uh Robbie Gold kicks a 46 yard field goal um funny thing about that was hit the uprights it was like a double doink it went no it's like a doink it went boom almost it almost went out so the game could have been 28 13. Jared McKinnon had a 16-yard run, and Braxton Berrios had a 30-yard touchdown pass from Sam Darnold. So, the 49ers and the Jets, I mean, the Jets, I would say, played okay on offense. I mean, if Perriman would probably still been in the game, maybe we could have scored a bit more points. Maybe we could have had a bit more opportunities. Um, and Herndon didn't show up either. It was very weird. Herndon was impressive in 2018's rookie season. He was... Good in training camp, but he's playing bad in the regular season. It just doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, maybe he does something against Indianapolis, but I don't know. Um, so, yeah. Now getting on to the good and the bad. Starting with the good. Quentin Williams had two sacks, two tackles for loss, and led the team in sacks. Quentin Williams is expected to have a breakout season this year, and this is probably his breakout game. So things are trending in the right direction for the New York Jets' third overall pick in 2019. Sam Darnold also looked pretty good. He was 21 for 32, 179 yards and one touchdown. Um, and keep note of this, he was playing with three receivers for basically the whole entire game. So that's something, um, you know, and he also didn't make any stupid mistakes. He didn't overthrow anyone. He didn't run out of bounds whenever pressure was coming to him. Um, he also had a dime play. Um, he was mobile, he used his legs, which was something that he did in USC, and he really hasn't done much in the NFL. But whenever he does do it, it's special. You see that two-point conversion against Buffalo, that touchdown against Buffalo as well. And this time against the 49ers, he was just scrambling and then threw across his body to Braxton Berrios. It was a dime. Um, 
the offensive line also looked pretty good. They only let up one sack. Now, maybe this was because the 49ers didn't really have any healthy people on the D line. Nick Bosa, out Solomon Thomas, out D Ford, out Eric Armstead had the only sack. Um, Makai Becton, George Fant look very good. Um, I mean, I'm happy about this offensive line group. Joe Douglas definitely improved it. Um, and also, Ficken was two for two. Um, our kicker that some people were cautious about, but he looked very good so far. He's three for three in the season currently. Um, I'm very happy about Ficken. I, I'm very, I believe in him very much. Um, so yeah, hopefully Ficken can play like this towards the rest of the season. Now getting on to the bad, the tackling. The Jets could not tackle anyone. No one. Like, where was the tackling at? I mean, we didn't work on tackling basically at all in training camp, which was stupid. Maybe they didn't want to get any more injuries, which I can, you know, tell they didn't want to do because we were injured enough as it is. And then imagine, I don't know, Avery Williamson tells his ACL again, or Marcus May tears his ACL. Quentin Williams, just the list goes on and on about injuries that could have happened. And... It turns out to be a bad decision, maybe, to not practice tackling in training camp, or maybe the Jets just aren't talented at all, tackling-wise. I mean, it was just bad. There were multiple opportunities where the Jets had the 49ers at a third and eight, third and five. They pass it to some player, and he breaks a tackle, goes on for a first down. It's just these missed opportunities that maybe could have led to the Jets taking the win. Uh, now, this is something that the New York Jets can't really handle. It's the injuries. I mean, Perryman coming out of the game because if he had, like, a knee injury, that was brutal. Um, Quincy Wilson, who has a concussion, or, yeah, I believe he has a concussion, came out of the game. That was also brutal. I mean, he was looking okay. Um, his stat line, let me get to that real quick. I mean, he wasn't looking bad. Obviously, the person who came in after him, Pierre Desir, had an interception. So he obviously, let me get the stat line because I'm just talking gibberish now. Um, he only had one tackle and one tackle for loss. So Quincy Wilson was like playing generic, I guess. Not great, but still, you don't want any of these players getting injured because we don't have really any depth in that cornerback position and wide receiver position. Um, and also, Gase's play calling was really bad. I mean, come on. It's a third and 18 and you run a running back draw. I mean, I know it worked for the 49ers because it was a third and 31, and Jarek McKinnon gets a 50-yard run. I mean, that goes with the tackling issues, but, I mean, it worked for the 49ers. But, I mean, seriously, you could have just gave Darnold the ball, let Darnold throw it to Perryman because I believe he was still in the game at the time, or let him throw it to Hogan, Herndon. I mean, just you could have let him do any of that stuff. Um, now, other things to point at that I really couldn't fit into the good or the bad because it was kind of neutral. I guess I could have made a category named neutral, but I'm just going to call it other things to point out. So, uh, Marcus May. The guy's obviously not Jamal Adams. I mean, he can't cover Jordan freaking Reed. Um, he was tied with the most tackles on the team in Quentin Williams with seven. Um, he had a pass deflection. Um, yeah, he had a pass deflection, and that's really it. He had seven tackles with the pass deflection. He couldn't cover Jordan Reed. I mean, I don't even want to think about what would happen if Jordan, not Jordan Kittle, George Kittle would have played. I mean, he would have just tore up that Jets secondary. But, I mean, Marcus May, I mean, he looked okay, I guess, but he's not Jamal Adams, which we were hoping for him to do. But um, let's hope he can play like he did in week one, the rest of the games. Um, Pierre Desir doesn't look like he was a waste of money. Um, he looked horrible week one against Buffalo, so they benched him week two. Wilson gets a concussion, and Desir comes in. Um, he looked okay, I guess. He had, um, let me find it, let me find it, let me find it. He had two tackles and one pass deflection, and he also had an interception. So, I mean, the guy wasn't horrible. But, I mean, he's not top tier, but it doesn't look like he's going to be a waste of money. Um, Bliss Austin looks solid. Um, and also, Chris Herndon. I mean, where is the guy? I already talked about this, but I mean, seriously, where is the guy? Um, this also, the thing I'm about to say goes into the bad category. Brian Costello of the New York Post said that the Jets should use a two tight end set with Herndon and Griffin. There was probably no play at all where they were both on the field at the same time. 
zero play. It was just like, come on, Adam. Come on, you want to do that? I was actually said that the Jets are going to be like Philadelphia with the two tight ends, how they have the two punch with Ertz and Gobert. But Gobert, however you pronounce his last name, but they're obviously not. So, I mean, it's just something just the Jets cannot get a hang of. Um, so this is my game recap. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe. And thanks for watching. And as always, go Jets.